After months of meetings, you decided to go to microservice architecture and deploy them to Kubernetes. And now you have 100 of them and you don't know how to pack them for production. So CICD is the answer to this question. And we are going to use GitLab CICD to run the pipelines and so on. So let's go. Well, what is CICD exactly? Well, it's short for continuous integration and continuous development. And if it is still unclear, uh, I don't know if they have made it clear here, but to put it in a simple words, it's integrating your software continuously while you're developing it. And I hope now that's clear. I don't know how to make it more clear. That's... But now uh, let's see how can we do it in GitLab. Well, now we are in the admin area in our GitLab, which we installed earlier. The, sub, the menu that we are really interested in in this video is the CI/CD menu, and here are the runners sub menu. What are runners? Well, basically they run stuff. The name implies. And what do they run? They run the CI/CD pipelines. What is a CI/CD pipeline? This is basically the definition of your repository of how you want to build it, test it, and publish it. So let's now get into the CI/CD pipeline. Now we are in the projects list. Uh, we are all of the admin area, and this is where all of the projects are, normal case. Uh, let's open one repository. So inside the repository, there is a menu called build, and then under it pipelines, and as you see, it's empty. So how is it going to run? So we are going to create a, a file called GitLab CI.yaml, and that file will be picked by the runner. So this is the definition that tells the runner that how I want you to build, test and publish. And then uh, here we'll show you the pipeline with these different jobs and then their, their state. Uh, so let's enough talking and let's actually create these files and uh, deploy the runner and see how are they getting together. So as you see, we are back in the uh, runners menu in the admin area, and then we are going to register a runner. So to register a runner, just copy this token from here. This is the token. Uh, you can also go here, you can pre-configure some stuff, but we are going to configure everything inside the runner when it's going to uh, introduce itself to our cluster, then uh, those configurations will come with it. So that is um, copied and inside here, I will share the link to this documentation also in the description. So you are going to need to add the GitLab repo to your Helm and then you need to repo update GitLab and then you can check the GitLab runners. I have already done this and uh, because we have already installed GitLab, but uh, now let's just install the runner. You need the token for here. You need to put the token here and you need to set your, where, where is your GitLab is sitting. And this is this part is important. You need a Kubernetes runner and the Kubernetes runner is to like build, the, um, build your container image and then publish it to somewhere. And then we are using Ubuntu and then uh, with this Kubernetes runner, the image it brings uh, the Docker image we are going to select actually. We are going to actually select the Docker image to build the um, image with Docker. And then we are going to publish it into the uh, Docker registry from GitLab. So let's actually run this and see uh, what will happen. So to run it, just after you have added your repo from uh, GitLab runners and so on, so just Helm install your name of release. So the name of the release that you want to uh, install this chart with. And then GitLab, uh, GitLab runner, this is the name of the chart and where it is, uh, where, where it can find it inside the GitLab repo. And then uh, the file that it, the values are uh, defined in it and then the namespace. So now let's see what will happen. So now this is up and it may take some, uh, it may take uh, some seconds until it is up here too. Well, it is already here and now we, uh, our runner is running. Uh, let's see how can we use it. Well, before we continue, I need to correct myself on something. Uh, in When we configured the GitLab runner, we forget this config. Uh, the RBAC create true. And uh, why is it needed? Well, this is the role binding configuration for um, Kubernetes. And by default, when you deploy a pod into Kubernetes, it will uh, use the default service account. And that service account doesn't have 
access to anything. It cannot create secrets, read them, uh, create parts, uh, and so on. So with this configuration, GitLab Runner will create its own service account with its own roles and role bindings, and then uh, it can run successfully. Otherwise, inside the logs, it will tell you that this user cannot access this resource and so on, so that's not really uh, fine. Uh, this is a project, this is a single repo project. Uh, this is a single project in one repository, and we are going to create a pipeline for this one first and see how uh, we can do that. So I have already uh, the pipeline uh, ready, but I'm going to show it part by part that how is it going to be done. We have created the GitLab CI YAML and it is empty. So now let's actually add stuff into it. I've already prepared the final template, but I'm going to put it uh, step by step. So, and I'm going to explain what's happening. So it's going to be clear that what are you using actually. The first part is the image. This image is the base image that you are going to build, test, and publish your app with. And then comes the variables, which is like basically just environment variables. And uh, this will be pushed into each stage, into each job. When uh, a job is done, it will, the container will be uh, killed, but to the new job, to the new container, this variable will be pushed by the runner. And then you have the stages. The stages that I am going to define right now is build and publish. I'm going to build my C Sharp application and I'm going to publish it. I forgot that I'm using this image because I'm going to build a pipeline for a C Sharp application, which is written in .NET 6. That's why I'm using .NET SDK 6. And I'm going to build with .NET command. So that's why I need that image and that will happen inside build. Now, after the stages, you need the definition for each stage. So my build stage is defined like this. I'm going to give a name to its job. The job is going to be called build backend and the build backend will run for the build stage. And with that, you can actually have multiple, jo multiple jobs for each stage. Let's say if you have a test stage and then you want to test your code and then you want to do integration test, once unit test, and then perhaps E3 tests, and then uh, all of them will run in uh, under each other. So after all of them are successful, then it will go on. Uh, so this is the build stage. And as you see, it has a script. It will build my application. It will publish typical .NET commands, and then it has the artifacts. What are they? So I'm basically uh, telling uh, GitLab to keep uh, the result of my build uh, when the build was successful uh, from this path. I want to keep anything that is under this path and I'm going to keep them for one day. And in the next stage, in the next job, you're gonna see why. So let's actually put the next stage and see what do I mean. So this one is the next stage. This is the publish stage. I'm going to say publish container. And as you see, it has a dependency to build backend this job. This means that when it's going to be loaded, it's going to pull everything or download any artifacts that were under the build backend, and then it's going to use them inside the scripts. So it's going to be exactly the same path that it has been here. And then I can just uh, build my um, container here. Here I don't need .NET anymore. I need Docker image. And with the Docker image, I'm going to run the Docker build, Docker publish, and Docker push. Um, the publish and push were the same. And I need a service. This is a DIND service. This is a Docker in Docker service. And this is these are the scripts. So let's actually push this and see what will happen. So as you see, I have a pipeline here running. And uh, so this is the build backend. Let's get into it. The job is successful. Let's go back to the pipelines. And then now it's going to run the publish container. Let's actually see inside. I'm going to, so as you see, it says uploading artifacts. It's going to upload the artifacts uh, into the uh, uh, mono, uh, into Minio, oh. sorry, into Minio from, uh, it's the object storage which GitLab uses. And then uh, the other job, this publish container one, will uh, download them and use them. So let's wait until it's ran. One eternity later. The publish ran successfully, and I'm going to actually go at the very top 
here it says downloading uh, artifacts for build backend so this is the dependency that happened and now at the end it says job successful as you see all of the docker command has run here and we have to have our container inside the container registry so actually let's check that out inside the deploy menu go to the container registry and here we go so now we have our container and this is the path to our container and uh, if this repository is private or internal you need to uh, set up uh, the docker credentials in kubernetes to create a new secret and then you add this image pool secret to kubernetes to be able to be pulled this image and that is where you can actually add licensing if your uh, applications includes licensing you can add licensing into the tokens that you're creating and give to the customers and uh, with that being said let's actually uh, move to the other um, topic that's, that's the same uh, we are going to do uh, the same thing for a mono repository so we had a single repository one project in one repository let's see what will happen if there are multiple projects in one repository now we are in our mono repo as you see we have three projects one is the is a class slip which is not really going to be deployable it's going to be used by other projects and we have the payment service and the tokens service. These two are web applications and we are going to deploy them. So how is it going to be happen? So we are going to have one pipeline and then we have to build two projects in it. So each of them are going to have a CI file. The token service have its own CI file and the payment service will have its own CI file. But uh, we need some configurations, so we need to uh, take care about some, some stuff. Uh, do you remember that we have a script inside here that says um, like build with .NET command and build a project? Here it just says build in the current directory, but when this uh, script is running, it is running inside the root folders, like running here. And then if we say .NET build, it, it's nothing to build here. So basically here you, you would need to say where is my code that uh, you should build and it is inside payments that service and uh, especially here about .NET don't, be, don't worry about this domain when you say .NET build it basically this one already knows where it should find its domain so it already goes out and find it so if only that you're going to uh, separate them then you're going to probably have an issue but uh, as long as the paths are going to point uh, exactly the point to each other exactly the same as it's going to point uh, when you're uh, building it locally then you will not have an issue so this one uh, was for the build and also one for when we are going to build the docker file so here it also goes to the so the docker file is stored under the payments service i'm just gonna copy this and now we are going to actually do the same for um, the other one a few moments later so now as you see both projects have the gitlab ci files and uh, let's see what will happen when we push these So if I go back here, it says the GitLab CI YAML, the push is there, the commit is there, but obviously nothing happened. And why is that? And why I was so confident about that? It was it is because uh, we also need one GitLab CI in the root that the runner picks because the runner doesn't know anything about the GitLab CI files inside um, the directories. So for that, we are going to have a new GitLab CI file, which is a bit different. It doesn't have anything to do with the images and it just, uh, we are going to only introduce packages to it. So let's create a new one here. CI YAML. And I have already uh, made one ready. which is here and I will explain what, what's happening here. So as you remember, we had some stages. Here our stages are packages. And as you see, I have two jobs with the stage packages. And uh, here I say, okay, this, this will trigger this GitLab CI file under here and it is dependent on it. 
So this means that if if I don't have this strategy, this means that if it even if it fails, the pipeline will be still shown as successful dependent on the other ones. But if it is dependent, even if one of them is failed and others are successful, the pipeline will be marked as failed. And then, uh, so this is the trigger part and this is the rule. It says, okay, when should I run this? So here, this is the tricky part. So every time that you're going to commit and push something into GitLab, it's going to run everything. And uh, with the rules, you can decide on which file changes you want to um, run the uh, pipeline. For example, if you have a version file, uh, you want to say, okay, I only want this one to be triggered on the GitLab CI YAML and the other one on everything. So let's actually try this and also push this one and see what will happen. GitLab CI packages added. As you see, now our pipeline is running. So now it's the payment service. Now let's do a refresh. Now both of them are running and they basically just run the GitLab CI inside them. So let's wait until both of them are done. A few moments later. I love it when the screen is all green in this case. And now, as you see, all of the jobs are ran. And if we go to deploy container registry, and as you see, our containers are also published. And with that, we have to wrap this one up. To wrap it up, in this video, we learned what is CI CD, what are GitLab runners, how to run a GitLab CI CD, how to run it and configure it for a single repository, for a mono repository. What we didn't check was how to deploy these containers now, because if you have 100 of them, you have to create 100 deployment files. In the next video, we are going to check how Kubernetes uh, agent service works, which is a service from GitLab, and it will pull automatically your changes, so you don't really need to do anything. Your DevOps will configure the deployment, and the developers will just code, commit, and uh, the code is up and running in production or staging. So with that, let's wrap it up, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time.